1 and liftoff of Discovery, hoisting harmony to the heavens. Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at Aster's progress, spacecraft engines, and more. Recently Aster managed to successfully launch a rocket to orbit and deliver the payload. This was a massive milestone for the company after multiple previous launch attempts did not go according to plan. However, in addition to this recent success, the company has been continuing to develop and innovate in other ways. Specifically, only a few days ago, Aster announced they had signed a significant contract with Leo Stella LLC for Aster spacecraft engines. These engines are meant to help Leo Stella continue to deliver constellations into orbit and beyond. In addition, Aster has been making significant progress on rocket development, testing, and launch procedures. This all plays into the success of the company and the future of Aster's opportunities. There are many different aspects of rockets and satellites that are necessary, however, engines are easily some of the most important. When used for spacecraft and satellites, they have many jobs including keeping the payload in orbit along with ensuring it's in the exact spot it's supposed to be. Here I will go more in depth into Aster's progress, recent contract, and the company's spacecraft engines. Aster Space has managed to prove itself as a fast-paced and ambitious company working to offer a large list of services for the space industry. As the demand for launch services and more continues to grow, Aster like many other companies is expanding its operations. First looking at the company's progress, earlier in the month Aster tweeted saying, VP of Operations Bryson Gentile shares operational progress leading up to Space Flight Incorporated's Aster 1 mission. Here, Aster provided information on past launches and general operations, and the improvements the company has made in such a short period of time. Specifically, they first highlight the launch cadence over the past few years. Launch cadence is the ultimate measurement that enables Aster to deliver to its customers. They have been working toward decreasing the number of days between launches and they plan to continue this trend in the right direction. Notably, between LV0008 and LV0009, Aster completed its LV0008 investigation incorporated corrective actions into LV0009, tested the updates, and returned to the launch pad to commence operations for this mission. They also provide a chart that shows the time between launches going all the way back to LV0004. One aspect that stands out is that the turnaround time for LV0006 is longer than the others. Aster explains that this is the case due to a large number of upgrades that were made to the launch vehicle during that time. The other main aspect of the chart you will notice is the improvement in time between launches each year. For example between LV0004 and LV0005, it took 95 days. Compare this to the recent launches of LV0008 and LV0009 with only 33 days in between. The next important aspect of improvement has to do with the build rate. This is the cadence, or tact, at which Aster delivers new rockets out of the factory. They are currently producing a rocket a month, and aim to increase this cadence this calendar year. Operating in continuous production means that Aster usually has an upcoming vehicle in stock, or in transit, while they are launching one on the pad. By the time they launched LV-0008, LV-0009 had already shipped to Kodiak. After the launch of LV-0008, Aster was able to return LV-0009 to the factory to make repairs identified from the LV-0008 anomaly. Having a complete rocket on hand was a tremendous asset towards finding the root cause of LV-0008's anomaly. Aster's team was able to quickly validate its corrective actions against real flight hardware before shipping LV-0009 again a few weeks later, demonstrating the company's ability to rapidly iterate and improve with every launch vehicle iteration. Here Aster provides another chart that highlights the improvement made over the past few years and where the company is at now. The last major improvements the company has made has to do with campaign length and countdowns per launch. Starting with campaign length, after arriving in Kodiak with LV0009, Aster set up its launch system and completed tests and checkouts on site. They aimed to static fire test, launch, and then save the site and pack the site back into shipping containers within three weeks. The campaign without site setup and teardown in between has the potential to be even faster. Just like the other metrics, campaign length has improved significantly over the past few years in launch vehicles. Lastly, you have countdowns per launch. Aster has now had two vehicles in a row that lifted off in the first minute of the launch window, demonstrating a well-timed repeatable operation that they plan to continue. The duration of the campaign for LV-0007 taught Aster a lot of great lessons about how to design for operating in strenuous weather environments. This sort of testing is common in the automotive world, where early cars are sent to extreme environments to ensure they can operate in the worst conditions. Aster incorporated those lessons and got back to a cold weather site with LV0009, and while lightning concerns prevented them from launching on the first day of the window, they returned to the pad the next day, had a clean launch count, and launched right on time in the first minute of the window. As Aster works to scale its operations, it will continue to test in extreme conditions. 
These exact examples can be seen clearly in the chart provided by Aster, showing the improvement through past and recent launches. Aster finished this progress report by saying, We are proud of our team for the progress that has been made, and we continue to focus on delivering access to space at scale. While we have demonstrated a shorter return to the pad with LV0009, we may increase time between launches to prepare for our new launch system, or due to other conditions outside our control, including availability of launch dates of our spaceports. It's clear Aster has made very significant progress in recent years, and is working to improve all aspects of the company. In other Aster news, the company has signed another contract, this time with Leo Stella. On April 12th, Aster tweeted saying, Aster announces contract for Aster spacecraft engines with Leo Stella LLC. Specifically, they announced a contract for Aster to provide multiple Aster spacecraft engines for Leo Stella satellites. Aster is expected to begin delivering the propulsion systems later this year and into 2023. Leo Stella designs and manufactures operational satellites cost effectively and at scale. Aster spacecraft engine has demonstrated that it can assist satellites in achieving and maintaining target orbits and maneuverability, and is expected to be integrated onto a variety of Leo Stella satellites. As demand for small satellites continues to grow, we are always looking for innovative options to provide highly efficient, reliable propulsion for our satellites, said Todd Byquist, Director of Programs and Supply Chain at Leo Stella. Aster spacecraft engine has good flight heritage, and the performance we need to get our satellites to space on schedule. Leo Stella is a pioneering force in constructing critical space infrastructure through a variety of satellite designs, said Mike Cassidy, VP of Product Management at Aster. Their vision to deploy reliable, cost-effective satellites aligns closely with Aster's and demonstrates the innovative forces at work to expand and accelerate access to space. Taking a closer look at Aster spacecraft engines, the company has quite a bit to offer. This includes ASC, Aster Spacecraft Engine and ASC Max, which can be configured with multiple thrusters and PPUs to handle a wide range of missions, from the smallest Earth observation satellites with 100 W orbit average power, up to large communication satellites with multiple kilowatts of solar power. With multiple thrusters, LEO and GEO orbit raises can take as few as 12 weeks. Specifically, ASC and ASC Max include an instant start center mounted cathode and compact design. Each thruster leverages the past 50 years of hull thruster research in an efficient clean sheet design. In addition, the PPU, power processing unit, is radiation hardened by design, replacing many microprocessors with simple and reliable components, creating a single circuit board design that is 95% efficient. Lastly, propellant tanks are sized specifically to fit the unique requirements of each customer mission, with flight proven COPV construction rated to 2700 psi, or 4000 psi. It's clear Aster has put a lot of focus not only on its launch vehicle and progress, but on other valuable aspects of the space industry, including spacecraft engines and more. Conclusion There are many different factors that determine the success of a rocket company. Aster knows this and has been working very hard over the past few years to improve. This not only includes ensuring the rocket reaches orbit, but also making sure the time in between launches is minimized as much as possible. The more frequently and consistently you can launch means much greater opportunities for the company down the line. We will have to wait and see how Aster progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.